Ibrahim Traoré has stunned the French forces in Burkina Faso, leaving them helpless. It becomes impossible for a colonial master to save his life and return to his own country when the youth awaken and refuse to follow orders. This scenario unfolded in Burkina Faso when the people took to the streets of Ouagadougou upon learning of France's return. They burned French flags and sent a clear message. France is not welcome in Burkina Faso. Amidst this turmoil, the question arises, will France remain in Africa or are we witnessing the expulsion of a colonial master from Burkina Faso? The streets of Ouagadougou were electrified as supporters of President Ibrahim Traoré gathered in response to the reappearance of French influence in Burkina Faso. This gathering underscored the intense tensions between the West African nation and its former colonial ruler France and raised critical questions about Burkina Faso's future independence and security. The strained relationship between Burkina Faso and France is well known. In recent years, there has been a notable shift with increasing dissatisfaction among Burkina Bay regarding French involvement in their national affairs. This discontent culminated in France's withdrawal from Burkina Faso, a move hailed by many as a step toward true independence. The catalyst for this shift was Traoré, whose rise to power brought a new dynamic to Burkina Faso's governance. President Ibrahim Traoré's ascent marked a significant departure from the political norm. Traoré, often regarded as a man of the people, brought a fresh perspective to governing the West African nation. His leadership style is characterized by a strong commitment to transparency, accountability, and the welfare of the Burkina Bay people. France perceives Traoré as an adversary, but he enjoys immense popularity among the people of Burkina Faso, who not only fight for their future, but also for their beloved leader. A key feature of Traoré's leadership has been his economic policies. Recognizing the need for sustainable development, Traoré has prioritized investments in agriculture, education, and infrastructure. His administration has implemented policies designed to stimulate economic growth and create jobs. In agriculture, Traoré launched initiatives to boost productivity and support small-scale farmers, including subsidies, training programs, and investments in modern farming equipment. These efforts have significantly increased agricultural output, enhancing food security and economic stability. Education is another critical focus of Traoré's administration. Understanding its role in development, he has heavily invested in building new schools, improving teacher training, and increasing access to education, especially for girls and marginalized communities. These efforts have led to notable improvements in literacy rates and educational outcomes nationwide. Under Traoré's leadership, Burkina Faso has embarked on an ambitious infrastructure development program, including constructing new roads, bridges, and public transportation systems. These projects aim to improve connectivity and facilitate economic activity, further driving the nation's development. Traoré's leadership and policies have fostered a sense of empowerment among the Burkina Bay, uniting them in their quest for true independence and a prosperous future. The strong opposition to French influence signifies a broader movement towards self-determination and sovereignty in Burkina Faso. Notably, his administration has prioritized the development of renewable energy sources, recognizing the importance of sustainable energy in driving long-term growth. One of the flagship projects of Traoré's tenure has been the construction of a new international airport in Ouagadougou. This state-of-the-art facility is expected to boost tourism and trade, significantly enhancing the national economy. Additionally, the development of new industrial zones and business parks is attracting foreign investment and creating new opportunities for local businesses. A central tenet of Traoré's leadership has been his unwavering commitment to fighting corruption. He has introduced a series of stringent anti-corruption measures, including the establishment of an independent anti-corruption commission and the implementation of strict transparency and accountability standards for public officials. These efforts have led to a significant reduction in corruption levels and have restored public trust in the government Traoré's administration has also been proactive in promoting good governance. This includes efforts to strengthen the rule of law, enhance the efficiency of the judicial system, and ensure that government institutions are responsive to the needs of the people. By fostering a culture of transparency and accountability, Traoré has created an environment where public officials are held to high ethical standards. His leadership has also been marked by a strong focus on social welfare and health care. Recognizing the importance of a healthy and educated populace, 
he has implemented a range of programs aimed at improving healthcare access and quality. These include the construction of new hospitals and clinics, investments in medical training and equipment, and the introduction of universal healthcare coverage. One notable achievement of Traore's administration has been the significant reduction in maternal and child mortality rates. Through targeted interventions, such as improved prenatal and postnatal care, vaccination programs, and nutritional support for mothers and children, Burkina Faso has made substantial progress in improving health outcomes for its citizens. Traore has also shown a strong commitment to environmental conservation, understanding the importance of preserving natural resources for future generations. His administration has implemented policies aimed at promoting sustainable land use, protecting biodiversity, and mitigating the impacts of climate change. These efforts include reforestation programs, the promotion of sustainable agricultural practices, and investments in renewable energy projects. Traoré's approach to environmental conservation has garnered international recognition, positioning Burkina Faso as a leader in sustainable development in the region. By balancing economic growth with environmental stewardship, he has set a precedent for other African nations to follow. Youth empowerment has been a cornerstone of Traoré's leadership. Recognizing the potential of young people as agents of change, he has introduced initiatives aimed at providing them with the skills, resources, and opportunities needed to thrive. This includes vocational training programs, entrepreneurship support, and the creation of youth development centers. Similarly, Traoré has been a strong advocate for gender equality and women's empowerment. His administration has introduced policies aimed at increasing women's participation in politics, business, and society at large. This includes efforts to ensure equal access to education, healthcare, and economic opportunities for women, as well as measures to combat gender-based violence and discrimination. Now, with the people taking to the streets, it is evident that Traoré has taught them how to raise their voices against wrongdoing. The recent uproar highlights the impact of his leadership and the awakening of a populace determined to fight for their rights and the future of their nation. The recent return of France to Burkina Faso has sparked significant controversy and concern among the Burkina Bay people. This development, marked by the re-establishment of a French presence in the country, has led to widespread protests and raised questions about the implications for Burkina Faso's sovereignty, security, and future trajectory. Historically, France had a welcoming presence in Burkina Faso, but recent years have seen a shift away from French influence. This change has been driven by growing discontent among the population, who perceive French involvement as a form of neocolonialism that hinders the country's progress and self-determination. The sentiment was exacerbated by the 2014 uprising that ousted longtime President Blaise Compaoré, a leader closely allied with France. Under the leadership of President Ibrahim Traoré, Burkina Faso embarked on a path of greater independence, seeking to diversify its international partnerships and reduce its reliance on France. This included strengthening ties with other nations and regional organizations and implementing policies aimed at enhancing domestic economic growth and development. So, why has France returned? Officially, French authorities have cited the need to address regional security threats, particularly the growing influence of violent groups in the Sahel region. The return of French forces and diplomats is framed as a necessary measure to support Burkina Faso in combating terrorism and ensuring regional stability. However, beneath the surface, broader geopolitical and economic motivations are at play. France has significant economic interests in Burkina Faso, including investments in the mining sector, where French companies are involved in extracting valuable resources such as gold and manganese. The return of France can be seen as an effort to safeguard these investments and maintain economic influence in the region. Additionally, France's return is part of a broader strategy to reassert its influence in West Africa, a region where it has historically played a dominant role. This move is seen as a response to the increasing presence of other global powers, such as China and Russia, which have been expanding their footprint in Africa through investments and diplomatic engagements. The public reaction has been overwhelmingly negative. The re-establishment of a French presence has been met with widespread protests and opposition from the Burkina Bay population. Many citizens view France's return as an affront to their national sovereignty and a reminder of the colonial past. The protests have been marked by large gatherings, with demonstrators carrying national and Russian flags and placards bearing slogans such as 
down with Macron, and we are a sovereign people. The protests have been particularly intense in Ouagadougou, where the French embassy is located. Demonstrators have demanded the relocation of the embassy, arguing that its proximity to the presidential palace poses a significant security risk. This sentiment is rooted in the belief that the French presence undermines the safety and autonomy of the transitional authorities, including President Ibrahim Traoré. The Burkinabe government and military have responded to the protests with a mix of caution and firmness. While the government has acknowledged the legitimacy of some of the protesters' concerns, it has also emphasized the importance of maintaining law and order. Security forces have been deployed to manage the demonstrations and ensure that they remain peaceful. At the same time, the government has engaged in diplomatic dialogues with French officials to address the contentious issues. The return of France to Burkina Faso has reignited tensions and debates about the country's sovereignty and future. The widespread protests reflect deep-seated frustrations and a desire for true independence and self-determination. As Burkina Faso navigates this complex situation, the actions of its leadership and the responses of its people will shape its trajectory in the years to come. The recent return of France to Burkina Faso has sparked significant controversy and concern among the Burkinabe people, leading to widespread protests and raising questions about the implications for the country's sovereignty, security, and future trajectory. Discussions between Burkina Faso and France have focused on finding a mutually acceptable solution that balances the need for security cooperation with respect for Burkina Faso's sovereignty. The outcome of these negotiations remains uncertain, but highlights the complex dynamics at play. If France stays, how will it affect Burkina Faso economically? The return of France has significant economic and social implications. On one hand, French investments and aid have the potential to support economic development and infrastructure projects, contributing to growth and stability. On the other hand, the perception of external interference and potential exploitative practices raise concerns about the long-term impact on the country's autonomy and development. The protests and public discontent highlight deeper social and political issues, with the Burkina Bay people expressing a desire for greater control over their destiny and a rejection of perceived neocolonial influences. This sentiment reflects broader trends across Africa, where there is a growing demand for self-determination and a reassessment of relationships with former colonial powers. The situation in Burkina Faso has attracted attention and reactions from regional and international actors. Neighboring countries and regional organizations such as the African Union and ECOWAS are closely monitoring developments. These entities have a vested interest in ensuring regional stability and may play a role in mediating tensions between Burkina Faso and France. Internationally, the return of France and the ensuing protests have been covered extensively by global media, drawing attention to broader issues of neocolonialism and foreign influence in Africa. The reactions from other global powers, such as the United States, China, and Russia, also reflect the complex geopolitical landscape as these nations have their interests and strategic considerations in the region. Looking ahead, the return of France to Burkina Faso and the ongoing protests will likely have lasting implications for the country's political and social landscape. The resolution of the current tensions will be critical in shaping the future of Burkina Faso's relationship with France and its broader foreign policy orientation. If the protests and public opposition continue, there may be pressure on the government to take a firmer stance against foreign influence and prioritize national sovereignty. This could lead to further policy shifts and realignments in Burkina Faso's international partnerships. Conversely, a diplomatic resolution that addresses the concerns of both parties could pave the way for a more balanced and mutually beneficial relationship between Burkina Faso and France. Such an outcome would require careful negotiation and a commitment to respecting Burkina Faso's sovereignty and developmental aspirations. The immediate catalyst for the protests was the announcement of the return of French diplomatic and possibly military presence, seen by many as a reassertion of neo-colonial control. The French embassy's proximity to the presidential palace heightened these fears, symbolizing the perceived overreach of French influence directly into the heart of Burkina Faso's governance. The protests have seen participation from a broad spectrum of society, including students, activists, nationalist groups, and ordinary citizens. Among the leading organizations is the National Coordination of Citizens Watch Associations, which has been vocal about the need for greater national sovereignty 
and has organized several demonstrations. Key figures have emerged within the movement, such as Hader Oedraogo, who has become a prominent spokesperson for the protesters. His speeches and interviews have resonated with many, articulating the fears and aspirations of a populace tired of foreign interference. Another notable figure is Pugolano, whose detailed accounts of interactions with the French embassy have highlighted the protesters' demands and experiences. The symbolism used in the protests has been potent and deliberate, with protesters carrying national flags to emphasize their call for sovereignty and independence. The presence of Russian flags among the demonstrators is particularly noteworthy, symbolizing a desire for new alliances and a shift away from traditional Western influences. Protest tactics have included peaceful marches, sit-ins, and symbolic acts such as the planting of trees around the protest sites to signify growth and a new beginning. The disciplined nature of the protests has been a point of pride for organizers who emphasize nonviolence and orderliness to garner broader public support and international sympathy. The protests have had a significant impact on daily life in Ouagadougou. Businesses near the French Embassy and the Presidential Palace have had to adjust to the constant presence of demonstrators and security personnel. This disruption has affected commerce and mobility, with some areas experiencing temporary closures and rerouted traffic. Despite these inconveniences, there is a sense of solidarity and purpose among the citizens. Many residents support the protests, viewing them as a necessary step toward reclaiming national dignity and independence. This widespread support has helped sustain the momentum of the movement, even as it faces challenges. This shows that the people are not ready to accept any form of modern slavery, which is seen as coming under the guise of protecting Africa. The modern slavery narrative is also rejected. Can France face the young people on the streets? Will they ever be able to exist in Africa without local permission? Let us know in the comment section. Do you think the youth has awakened? If you want to watch more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.